Hello and welcome to part two of the Dennis Dominator story. But before we go on, let's have a brief recap on what was in part one. We found out the whole world hated British Leyland. And the manager of Leicester City Transport, Geoffrey Hilditch, managed to convince Hester Dennis to build a double-decker bus with a rear engine. This bus became the Dennis Dominator and though it only sold in fairly low numbers, it was apparently loved by everybody. In this video we will be looking at some weird and wonderful Dennis Dominators, including the single decker ones. The first single decker Dennis Dominators appeared in October 1978 and this started a new chassis numbering sequence. This one being delivered on chassis number SD103A-126. It was fitted with Khmer bodywork which was built by Marshall of Cambridge and was given the registration number YVN73T. And the bus was exhibited at the Earls Court Motor Show that year. Now, I'm not exactly sure as to why Dennis felt it needed a single-decker version of the Dominator. But, as history shows us, even the MCW Metro bus was originally designed to be built with single-decker or double-decker bodywork. So maybe manufacturers were aware of the changing trends of the industry at the time and thought they would cut research and development costs down by having a chassis that could be suitable for double-decker buses or single-decker buses. The single-decker Dennis Dominator ran to 37 examples being built, including a non-PSV which was for Tyne and Weir Fire and Rescue. The other customers for the single-decker Dominator were Darlington, Barrow, Hartlepool, Merthyr Tidville and Thamesdown. The Hartlepool and Barrow buses were bodied by East Lancashire, all the rest were bodied by Marshall of Cambridge. I have a recollection of reading in Buses Annual many, many, many years ago that it was voted that the East Lancashire bodies on the single decker dominators was one of the ugliest bodies built. But I don't know, I don't think it's that horrendous to be honest with you. I mean it's certainly no oil painting but there we are. The last single decker dominator was FAM4W for Thamesdown and that was delivered in August 1980. In the mid 1980s South Yorkshire PTE were looking at the feasibility of the reintroduction of trolley buses and the result of this saw what was probably the strangest Dennis Dominator of all, a trolley bus Dennis Dominator. Now I have to admit I remember as a child seeing a picture of this or it might have actually been the mock-up because there were a couple of mock-up photographs of a Dennis Dominator that actually had the trolley booms painted in and even at the young tender age of about 12 I thought this was a bit of a wind-up. But no, it isn't. The chassis started out as a standard Dennis Dominator, with the chassis number DDA901-770, and would have been built in the latter part of 1984. However, it was plucked from obscurity, given a new chassis number, DTA1401-101, and was fitted out with all the mechanical and electrical bits and bobs to turn it into a trolley bus. This included a GEC 132 kilowatt traction motor, trolley booms on the roof to carry the current from the overhead lines down to the motor, and a small Dorman 37 kilowatt diesel engine which would allow the bus to move and position itself under the lines without having to be towed or pushed. The bus eventually emerged in September 1985, originally registered B450CKW, however delays getting it registered for road use saw it reissued with the registration C45HDT. It was based at South Yorkshire's Leicester Avenue garage in Doncaster, which was just over the road from Doncaster Racecourse, which was where the trials were going to take place. The PTE had erected a mile of overhead trolley wires along Sandal Beat Road which ran adjacently to the racecourse. At each end there was a turning circle. 
and here the engineers from the depot could keep an eye on it. Despite all the testing, there were some public demonstration rides given. And if you were lucky enough to travel on this thing, well, that must have been absolutely amazing. Unfortunately, though, by the mid-1980s, the Conservatives were looking at privatising the bus industry. And in the face of this, South Yorkshire PTE decided to cancel the trials. The Dennis Dominator trolleybus was to remain unique and now lives at Santoff Trolleybus Museum. I think with everything that is said today about green transport and electric vehicles, wouldn't it have been wonderful to have had this back in the 1980s or even have left the original systems in place? What do you think? A wise person once said, to go forwards you have to look backwards. The first true Dennis Dominator to be exported was in January 1979 and that was for China Motorbus. Rather unusually for Hong Kong, it featured bodywork by East Lanx. China Motorbus took more Dennis Dominators in 1982 and these had the more standard, for Hong Kong, Alexander bodywork. Kowloon Motorbus, the other major operator in Hong Kong, didn't take its first dominators until the beginning of 1984 and these were bodied by Jupal Metsec. In the end, KMB built up a fleet of 40 Dennis dominators. But when you consider China Motorbus only took seven, 40 seems like a huge number. By 1982, Dennis had engineered a dominator chassis to have three axles. This was marketed to Kowloon Motorbus as the Dennis Dragon. Incidentally, the name Kowloon actually translates into Nine Dragons, so that was quite a nice touch, wasn't it? The Dragon was available in four lengths. 9.9 metres, 10.3 metres, 11 metres and 12 metres. It could be powered by either the Gardner 6LXB or the Cummins L10, and the L10 was initially the option but that became more standard as production progressed. To differentiate the sales between the two rival companies, the buses that went to China Motor Bus were known as Dennis Condors, even though they were exactly the same as the Dennis Dragons that KMB were getting. Apart from a few of the prototypes, all the Dennis Dragons were bodied by Dupal Metsec. City Bus started to order air-conditioned Dennis Dragons in 1993. And again, these were fitted with Dupal Metsec bodywork. Don't be fooled by that Alexander front end. These were assembled in Portugal, and the Alexander front end was something that they specified. Across Hong Kong and across the companies, there was a mix of air-conditioned and non-air-conditioned buses. Although, to be fair, all the ones that City Bus took were air-conditioned. In the end, 1,650 Dennis Dragons were built all for export. And that number actually exceeds the number of Dennis Dominators built. So you could argue that the Dennis Dragon was actually more successful than its parent vehicle, the Dennis Dominator. I don't know about you, but I find that a bit of a strange situation, really. When Hong Kong started having a purge on non-air-conditioned buses, many of the Dennis Dragons were repatriated back to the UK where they found work with various operators for use on things like school buses. Although, speaking as a bus driver, I don't think I'd personally want to be in charge of about 120 school children on a bus on my own. My sense of adventure has left me many years ago, unfortunately. Some were converted to open top and plied the capital's streets for many years, where they rubbed shoulders with former Hong Kong three-axle metro buses. A fair few of them kept their tropical sliding windows, although these were actually sealed shut. And when compared to a standard British double-decker bus, this did make them look rather odd. Another spin-off of the Dennis Dominator was the Dennis Domino, and in size alone can be seen as a direct ancestor to the Dennis Dart. There were only 34 Dominoes built, and these went to two operators, Greater Manchester PTE, who took Northern Counties bodied ones, and South Yorkshire PTE, 
who took Optair bodied ones. Optair by now having taken over the old business and factory of Charles Rowe from Leyland, which was quite ironic as the Dominator, which the Domino evolved from, was built as a direct competition towards British Leyland products. The chassis was a shortened and scaled down version of the Dominator and had an overall length of 7.6 metres. The engine was mounted across the back and upright as in the Dennis Dominator, but this time it was fitted with a 130 brake horsepower 5.7 litre Perkins engine, which drove through a Maxwell transmission. The reason for such a bespoke vehicle being made was as follows. Greater Manchester Transport operated a fleet of life-expired Seddon Pennines on the Manchester shuttle service between Victoria and Piccadilly railway stations. At the time, there was no suitable replacement for these buses, as production of the Bristol LH had ceased in 1982. And so the PTE asked Dennis for a solution, and thus the Dennis Domino was born. The South Yorkshire buses were required to replace life-expired Bristol LHSs that were used on routes that served hard-to-reach areas in the city of Sheffield. And these were slightly longer than the Manchester ones at 7.8 metres long. And when you consider the later products from the Optair factory, these weren't as stylish either. Whilst the 20 Northern Counties bodied ones for Greater Manchester were styled by Ken Mortimer, who was the man who'd styled the Mancunian bodywork on the double-decker buses in the late 1960s for Manchester Corporation, the 14 bodied by Optair for South Yorkshire were a little bit more slab-sided and looked a little bit more boxy. But this probably wasn't helped by the specification of South Yorkshire to have as many standardised parts with its large fleet of Dennis Dominators. A fun fact, Optair bodied C42 HDT is now part of the Nemesis ride at Alton Towers. It originally been one of the South Yorkshire PTE buses. And before anybody utters that well-known phrase, it must be saved... It has provided spare parts for a couple of the preserved Dennis Dominoes that are still in existence. So all is not lost. Yet another spin-off of the Dennis Dominator was the Dennis Falcon. The Falcon chassis first appeared in 1981 and the first bus went to Leicester City Transport and was bodied by Dupal. The chassis of the Falcon, forward of the rear wheels, was exactly the same as that on the Dennis Dominator. And while the Dominator was seen as a natural successor to the Daimler fleet line, the Falcon was seen as a bit of a successor for the Bristol RE. In fact, mechanically, the layout was very similar. These first buses were called the Dennis Falcon H, H for horizontal, referring to the position of the engine at the rear. The engine was coupled to a Voith gearbox, which was ahead of the rear axle, and this was coupled to a reversing unit, or an angle drive, which turned the drive back towards the rear axle. Later improvements saw the launch of a HC model. This saw the engine close coupled to the gearbox, H again for horizontal and C standing for continuous drive which eliminated the need for the extra prop shafts and the reversing unit for the drive. Later still would see the launch of the Falcon V, and this would be suitable for both double-decker and single-decker bodywork, the V denoting the V6 or the V8 engine that would power them, these being a Daimler-Benz V6 in the double-decker chassis and a Perkins V8 in the coach chassis. There was only 139 Falcons built. Of the production run, there's some notable examples. Ten were bought by National Express and bodied by Dupal and were used to launch the Rapid services. But reliability issues saw them soon replaced by more conventional Leyland Tigers and Metro liner coaches. Only six Dennis Falcons ended up being bodied as double-deckers. The first was used as a demonstrator by Dennis 
and was finished in this rather fetching two-tone green livery, but unfortunately suffered the fate of being turned into a play bus at quite an early stage of its life. Two went to Nottingham City Transport and were fitted with East Lancashire bodywork, and three went to Greater Manchester Transport and were bodied by Northern Counties. Apparently there were problems with lots of noise in the lower deck saloon. But when you look at them, they do resemble a B10 double-decker, don't they? And you can see the theory of the good idea was to have the engine underneath at the back to create more room inside for fair-paying passengers. Finally, Kowloon Motorbus in Hong Kong purchased 20 Falcon HCs, which were fitted with duple coachwork in 1985 and 1986. They were used for the Airport Express service And the last one was withdrawn in 2001, which seems a pretty normal service life, doesn't it, really? Fortunately, many Dennis Dominators have been saved for posterity. Although it's perhaps a shame that the first and the very last Dominators have bitten the dust. But there's an irony that the second Dennis Dominator in production, UFP233S, is now immaculately restored with Leicester Transport Heritage Trust, whilst the penultimate Dennis Dominator built, N715TPK, which was new to London and Country at Guildford, has also been preserved, this time in private preservation. In between these two buses, there are a whole generation of preserved Dominators, which go some way towards telling the story of this fascinating bus. And there's a fair few South Yorkshire Dennis Dominators that are preserved as well. And many years ago when these started to come out of service, I was reading Bus and Coach Preservation magazine and I remember them doing an article on the buses being withdrawn. And hopefully this article raised a lot of awareness that these buses were coming out of service and that helped to save some examples of them. Some of the weird and wonderful Dominator spin-offs have also entered preservation. There's several dominoes that are preserved. I believe there's at least one Hartlepool Dennis Falcon that's preserved. Tell me if I'm wrong, please do. The Dominator trolley bus is also in preservation. And lastly but not least, the unique Dennis Dominator fire engine, which was new to Tyne and Weir Fire and Rescue Services, has also been preserved too. I really hope you have enjoyed this second look at the Dennis Dominator and its spin-offs. If you have enjoyed it, please like and share this video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any future releases in this series. Many thanks for watching. Bye for now.